Welcome to another episode of Furlongs and Horses. My name is Rachel, and I'm your host. You can find me at my regular racing blog, furlongdrive.blogspot.com, or at the Breeders' Cup blog, which can be found at roadtothecupblog.blogspot.com. Today's preview is on the Pacific Classic. It is a win in your in for the Classic uh, it's at a mile and a quarter on uh, Polly at Del Mar. There's a field of 11 entered into this race, and uh, it could have a big factor on a couple of championship titles that I will be talking about uh, when I get to previewing uh, those horses. So let's take a look at the field for this year's Pacific Classic. Number one is Frack Daddy. Kenny trains and uh, Alan Garcia will ride. He's by Scat Daddy. Uh, fourth in the San Diego, second in the Dominion Day, and he won the Eclipse. He is by far a synthetic specialist. I mean, he's last year, I think he did okay on uh, dirt, but uh, he is definitely a poly cushion. Uh, to be the specialist. Um, I think a mile and a quarter will be a little bit farther than he really wants to go uh, tomorrow, but I just feel like it's going to be an interesting race for him because he's on the rail. Uh, and the fact that he does better on a synthetic than he does on dirt. That being said, he is going the wrong direction finishing wise and that his finishes have gone worse. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a major uh, problem for him and uh, could finish uh, better uh, than a few other horses that are in uh, this year's race. Number two is Irish Surf. Uh, Elvis Trujillo will ride for Dan Hendricks. He is by Giants Causeway. And I should mention that his pedigree, a mile and a quarter, won't be a big problem. Um, other than Giants Causeway being a classic runner-up, his granddam, uh, uh, is Flanders, um, who won the Juvenile Phillies, uh, by a nose over her stable, uh, mate, Serena Son. Um, he, Irish Surf won the Cougar 2 in his last, and then he was fourth in the Whittingham and an allowance, uh, optional claimer. Um, as I said, pedigree-wise, a mile and a quarter should not be a problem. Uh, his damn surf side defeated males. In the Clark, uh, I believe she was might have even been three when she did that. She might have been three or four, I forget. But um, a serious chance could be a very dangerous horse down the road uh, when it comes to classic time. Uh, and he is definitely going to be mentioned when I do my picks. Number three is imperative. Uh, Kent DeSormo rides for George Papa Dromo. And yes, I think I have it, his name correctly now. Uh, by Bernardini, uh, eighth in the San Diego, third in the Gold Cup at San Anita. And then he, of course, he defeated Game on Dude in the Charlestown Classic. Uh, he does have um, some other experience at Del Mar. He was second and eighth in two other starts. But I think the magic has run out. The fact that he, uh, once again, it's he's kind of reverted to his um, form he had, I believe, before the uh, San Antonio earlier this year where he finished second. Uh, ran poor in the big cap and then rebounded Charlestown. Classic. It's I just feel like 
he is more of a dirt horse than a synthetic. Um, and I don't think he will do well. I think my uncle is a little bit farther than he really wants to go as well. Um, but we'll have to see what uh, he does. Number four is Ice Cream Truck. And I just have to say that is like the best summer name, Ice Cream Truck. He's by Pleasantly Perfect, who won the Pacific Classic the year after uh, he won the Breeders' Cup Classic. Tiago uh, Perra will ride for AC Avilia. Um, he was third in his last two races, uh, including the Cougar 2 to Irish Surf. Uh, his best finish um, at Del Mar was a second last year, and he is actually cross-centered to the Del Mar Handicap. Actually, Irish Surf uh, helped him because he scratched out of the Del Mar Handicap to go to the Pacific Classic. For purposes, of this, I am going to say he's going to the Del Mar handicap because he has no chance in this race otherwise. However, um, I haven't heard any announcements about him scratching out of uh, either race, so I'm going to keep him in here. But by the time uh, you see this, he will likely be either have run in the Del Mar handicap or was scratched out for the Pacific Classic. Uh, so this, by the time this goes up, it will probably be a little bit out of date, and I apologize for that. Uh, as I said, I just feel like he will not run well here. Um, I, I don't even really know how well his Delmar handicap, uh, chances are, but I just feel like he is a horse who won't do well here. So, make sure I have my uh, numbering correct. And I do, okay. Number five is that wonderful, wonderful gelding. Game on, dude. Of course, don't really need to talk a lot about him. Bob Baffert trains. Martin Garcia will ride. By Austin again. He is the defending champion. Unfortunately, it looks like, though, he just finally caught up to him. Uh, fourth in the Gold Cup, uh, second in the Charlestown Classic, and, of course, he won the Santa Anita Handicap. Synthetic has never really been his um, foray. Uh, that being said, he ran well. And has won on synthetic before, but he is more of a dirt horse, and uh, looks like he's going to have company on the front end uh, for this race. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I mean, I in my heart of hearts, I want to see him win. I just, I, I don't think he'll get it. Uh, if he gets to lose the lead, if that other speed horse that I'll talk about in a little bit um, doesn't show up, then I think he wins because uh, just pick based on record and pure talent, he is the best horse in the race. I just feel like he won't um, do well here. But I'm hope I'm wrong about this. I really am. Number six is you know I know. Uh, Edwin Molinano will ride for John Sadler uh, by Simon Pierre. Third in San Diego, fourth in an allowance uh, option claimer, and sixth in the All American. Uh, in his last three starts, uh, he. Uh, tends to look like better on synthetic. He was third in last year's Pacific Classic in Fayette at Keeneland. Of course, Keeneland is now a dirt track again, and Del Mar won't be a dirt track until next year. So he is probably, like um, Frack Daddy, going to be one of those who is disappointed that the synthetic at those two major tracks is going bye-bye. 
Um, I I really don't know. Um, actually, the um, Pat O'Brien, uh, which is the race right before the Pacific Classic tomorrow, uh, will be a big factor because the winner of the San Diego Fed Biz is the defending champ of uh, the Pat O'Brien. So if Pat, uh, Fed Biz, Fed Biz can uh, defend his Pat O'Brien title, um, that is good news for those going to San Diego. I just think you know I know it's not going to be a horse who will be in the top three. Um, for uh, this year, just the fact of who actually showed up. Number seven is Majestic Harbor. Uh, he's by Rockport Harbor. Uh, Sean McCarthy uh, trains and Tyler Bays will ride. Won the Gold Cup in his last third in the Californian and won the Tokyo City. He does have a start at Del Mar, but that was on turf. Still, he finished third. So, you know that synthetic might not be a problem for him. I just feel like he might be better on dirt. Of course, distance should not be a problem. Because he's already won at the mile and quarter distance. Um, he is going to definitely be in my top three. Uh, I believe uh, outside of Game on Dude and... Um, the one of the two three-year-olds that are in the race uh he is the horse to beat um i feel like he could do very well here and i'm hoping that maybe possibly we'll see him in a uh area that has the initials wc Number eight is Toast of New York. Uh, Jamie Osborne will ride for Victor, uh, will train, and Victor Espinoza will ride. I kind of almost got that screwed up. Actually, there was an interesting story about how Victor got uh, the ride on Toast of New York uh, through Twitter. Of course, Victor won the Derby in Preakness this year. Um, Toast of New York was actually going to go to um, the uh, Derby, but skipped it. And despite his name, he is not a New York bred. He is, was born in Kentucky. Uh, he's by The Way You Are. Um, and The Way You Are, I should mention, is from uh, the same female family as Jazzle and... Rags to riches. So, mile and quarter won't be a problem. That being said, sticks in the Belmont Derby, and actually the winner of that race, Mr. Speaker, goes today in the Travelers. Uh, but he does have some synthetic uh, form. He, he won the UAE Derby um, and a small stake at Wolverhampton in England, and it's three for four on synthetic. Um, I think he's going to love the poly at Del Mar. Um, could be a serious um, contender here. And the fact that he has a jockey who knows the track well uh, helps. And uh, could be a major factor uh, in this race. Number nine is Clubhouse Ride. And he's by Candy Ride. Craig Lewis trains for Joe Talmo Riding. Um, second in the Gold Cup, won the Californian, and fourth in the Charlestown Classic. Um, he did, his synthetic form is a bit of a hit and miss, but last year when Hollywood Park was still open, they have cushion and he won on that. So, in the Californian, um, I think he went on to be second in the uh, Gold Cup, uh, Hollywood Gold Cup uh, there, so it's it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, my only problem is, is that he, he hasn't had a great one yet, one uh, win yet, um, and uh, it's 
going to be a bit of an uphill climb for him in this race. Um, but we'll have to see how well he does. Number 10 is Mystery Train. There are Vienna ride, uh, trains for, uh, and Fernando, uh, Perez, uh, rides. There we go. I almost did it again. Uh, he is by Not For Sale, and he's not really much of a mystery. Um, he's won his, uh, last three starts, two of them group ones in Argentina, where he was fooled. Um, this will be his U.S. debut. Um, this is the horse who can challenge the dude on the front end. If they get in a speed duel, I think dude will be backing up big time as they hit the stretch. Um, but if he gets a loose lead or the dude gets a loose lead, then probably uh, one of those two will could easily win. But I want to see a bit of a speed duel. I want to see the dude challenge. And I want to see the duel uh, overcome that challenge. I just don't know if he will. And Mystery fa uh, Train is going to be the it factor. Um, of course, the biggest thing is, is that this will be his U.S. debut. Um... So we're going to have to see if he's really the real deal or if he just challenges dude and falters at the end. Um, but he's in a good spot. California is the place to be if you're a Southern Hemisphere horse, especially from uh, South America because uh, those are the horses who tend to do well because I think they're Climate is very similar uh, to South America, California climate. Uh, and number 11, last but not least, is the other three-year-old in the race. And he is the defending two-year-old champion male, uh, undefeated in his career, uh, shared belief by Candy Ride. Jerry Hollendorfer trains Mike Smith, jumps off Game on Dude to ride him here. Won the Los Alamitos Derby in allowance and a cash call for charity um, in his last three starts. Uh, of course, he passed his dirt test in his last winning what was formerly the Sham. Um, now comes the big test whether he can go a mile and a quarter. If he wins here, he could seriously give California Chrome problems in the classic. Uh, looks like California Chrome is going to make his comeback in the PA Derby and uh, not the awesome again. Um, so we're going to have to see. Right now, uh, the Derby winner is leading the pack. But uh, today and tomorrow are going to be major days. Um, for the three-year-old championship. Um, the 11 post uh, is going to hurt him big time. I just feel like he's going to probably have to overcome a lot to win here. And it's not going to be a good race for him. I think he'll take the loss on the chin and come back and flourish even more. Um... But, of course, great horses can overcome difficulties. So, if he wins, it would not be a big surprise to me as well. And that is this year's field for the Pacific Classic. So, up next are the picks. So, finally, uh, here are the picks for the Pacific Classic. Uh, I'm going to do things in a little bit different order today. I'm going to start out with my two dark horses. And those are Irish Surf. On the fact that I feel like uh, a mile and a quarter won't be a problem for him. Synthetic won't be a major problem for him. And the fact that I feel like he could be a horse who will be 
a major factor down the line in the Classic, I believe, along with um, my pick to win. Um, I'm not sure about anyone else in the race other than one other horse, um, being a dark horse, that is. Um, but I just feel like he, he'll be a major factor into it. Um, secondly, I have a second dark horse, and the reason why I'm picking him is the fact that he is three for four on synthetic, and that's Toast of New York. Um, won the, uh, UA Derby pretty nicely. Um, first U.S. start didn't go according to plan, but the fact that they are going with an American rider instead of a European rider, I think it's going to be a good thing more than a bad thing. Um, and frankly, just the way, as I said, Victor Espinosa uh, got the ride was kind of cool. Um, but, uh, so I surfed Toast of New York. Really couldn't um, make a ca uh, better case for either of them, so... I'm choosing both of them as my uh, dark horses uh, for the Pacific Classic. Uh, so now to win, place, and show. Um, to win, I have um, Justin Carver. I just feel like right now he is the horse who is in the best form outside of my two dark horses. Um, could be very wrong about this though and but I just feel like he will be your winner uh, to finish second I have uh, Clubhouse Ride uh, I just feel like that hopefully maybe he can get the win but I'm not 100% sold on him to win uh, this year's Pacific Classic and finally I have Frack Daddy and the reason why I have Frack Daddy over our surf in Toast of New York as my uh, show horse is that I think our surf in Toast of New York have great chances to win. I don't, I'm not 100% sold on Frack Daddy, but I do think he will be in the top three. Of course, I've been run before. Um, I think even though you really never want to have the rail, it is the shortest way around, um, and it could be helpful, but if he gets boxed in, then he might be done. So, uh, again, um, uh, to win, uh, because I forgot to go over the horses, um, after I did the preview for the field, but that's okay. Uh, when I have Majestic Harbor. Place, I have Clubhouse Ride, Show, I have Frack Daddy, and I have two Dark Horses again, I Surf, and Toast of New York. So that is it for the Pacific Classic preview. I will be back um, probably Wednesday will probably be my next uh, day I'll be able to get solid recording done because this weekend has been all about previews and recaps. Um... Leading up to next week, though, um, there is one win in your in. It is the Forgo at um, Saratoga. I'm hoping to have a video preview of that. If I have a video preview of it, um, that will actually be the first race I preview. The second race I'm going to preview will be the Woodward, which is not a win in your in, but will be uh, an important factor for the Classic and older male division and that is actually also going to be one actually going to be the second to last uh grade one race that tom Durkin's going to call because believe it or not we are uh a week and a day away from his final call at saratoga which is quite uh sad and sad and scary that uh his legendary career is coming to an end um, check back on Furlong Drive, uh, tomorrow I am going to have a post of me basically talking about the last 10 years, um, which is how long I've been following racing, 
uh, of his calls. I have some great videos up there uh, from his uh, days at NBC and then his Nair days. Um, there might be a little bit surprised at the end, um, but I haven't made a full decision about it. Uh, so I will be checking in on you guys again on Wednesday, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.